You're welcome. Uh, it's always, they, they seem to work better when they're turned on. Yeah. Turned on. Okay. Yeah, there we go. We all seem to do better when we're turned on, don't we? Yes. All right. Welcome to summer. Another beautiful day. August 20th. How the heck did we get here? August 20th. Living, living. Man, we're all set for a gorgeous September, right? It's going to be beautiful. So welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, North Jersey. This is a wonderful place to be and on your programs. And in the chat, you have, you can read along with me. We are an open and affirming science of mind community where the vibration of love lifts you, the wisdom of the ages inspires you, and the science of mind teaching empowers you. Here at the center, we believe that heaven and hell are states of consciousness that you experience in this lifetime, and you are the architect of your life, and it's never too late to know true happiness. Very good. I want to welcome everybody here today, especially the first-time people. Uh, say hello to everybody out there in Zoom land as well. Welcome. Good to have everybody here. We had another beautiful Psalm Sunday, and we're looking to do something a little bit different with Psalm Sunday going into 2024. We're already looking at 2024. We don't know what that's going to be, maybe different types of books or whatever, so if anybody has any great ideas, please let us know. Um, we have uh, Ty and Clyde for our music today. And we have the Reverend Dr. Michelle who will be doing our lesson for today as well. So now going to have, uh, have uh, our opening chant and then our opening treatment with uh, Reverend Michelle. And uh, we'll be back after that. And as always, we invite you to close your eyes, sing along, let yourself become one with the music, one with the word, one with the spirit. A unique expression of God's love. The manifestation of God's inspiration. I am God's gift, present of mind. A unique expression of God's love. The manifestation of God's inspiration, you are God's gift, present of mind, a unique expression of God's love. The manifestation of God's inspiration, we A unique expression of God's love. The manifestation of God's inspiration. Ah, oh, with the sweetness of this song, <laughs> lulling us into remembering who we are because we can't be anything other than who we are. So we're just remembering. We're constantly remembering our divine perfection, that birthright that called us into being. So I invite you right now to take just a minute in silence and go within to remember, oh my God, that being that you were at two or three or four when life and every breath was a miracle. 
So go into that inner landscape with me and get present to the being that you were called to be. So let's keep alive some of our spiritual practices. Please repeat after me. I am the peace I wish to be. I know this peace for my family. I know this peace for my community. My community knows this peace for the world. And if you will, join me in this spiritual practice with the mudras. You'll have to open your eyes if you don't remember. Everything I see is sacred. Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I speak is sacred. All of life is sacred. Let's do that again. Everything I see is sacred. Everything I hear is sacred. Everything I speak is sacred. All of life is sacred. And one more thing, just repeat after me. I am the place where love resides. I am the place where love resides. Yes. And so know with me right now that there is this love that is vibrating, it's moving, it's shifting, it's accepting and allowing our entry into it. There is just this divine dance, this flow, this synchronized living in right relationship with spirit, and it is stunning. I bless the Center for Spiritual Living North Jersey. I bless its leadership. I bless the practitioners, our musicians, and every member and friend and visitor. I call our time together good and very good, and I call it healing. I say that every time we come together, healing is possible. So let us breathe that reality in remembering who we are and to whom we belong. This day is good and very good. What a stunning moment in reality. Let us accept this as so with a breath of acceptance. And so it is. your neighbor, your partner, and share that moment with them.
present of mind, a unique expression of God's love. The manifestation of God's inspiration, I am God's gift, present of mind, a unique expression of God's love. The manifestation of God's inspiration, I am God's gift. Yes. Me. <laughs> well, already then. <laughs> Just got love popping up all around. Thank you. Hey. Hey. You like, you like I know I'm hard to miss. Ah. Uh, you gotta love Tony, right? That's right. All right. If you would please, it is in the chat and it is also here. And by the way, if you're having trouble hearing anything on, uh, uh, if you're a Zoomer and you're having trouble hearing. Just let us know whether it's the voices or whether it's the music. I've turned up the gain a little bit here. Maybe that'll help. So please read the affirmation for August along with me. There is an energy that moves, motivates, and activates my good. Enthusiasm abounds as I open my mind and heart to the universal inspiration and influence that captivates my attention and empowers me to move forward. I am an unstoppable force of creativity and good. The world around me benefits from my yes, and so it is. Yes. yes. Now for another song. Okay. Yes, we have another song. <laughs> it seems the songs this morning were chosen as a very personal moment. So this is personal to you and very personal to me. I am perfect as I am I am God's unerring plan Even broken parts of me Make me who I'm meant to be When I'm in my darkest place Something brings me to God's grace And with tears and trembling hands I remember whose I am When my heart is broken wide God is reaching deep inside Helping me to know my worth As I walk upon this earth When I'm in my darkest place Something leads me to God's grace And with tears and trembling hands I remember whose I am I am perfect as I am I am God's unerring plan Even broken parts of me Make me who I am
are so blessed to have such talent here. And yes, I did mean these too, but also out here as well. This is an incredibly talented community. Which takes me to um, what I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to introduce our speaker for the day. Now, I, I, it's not just a speaker. Reverend Michelle is our founding spiritual director. And um, she's just back from a tour of the West Coast. <laughs> If you consider two stops a tour, then that's a tour. Um, but I do want to say something. Michelle has been in this organization and spent a lot of time in leadership in this organization at the global level. And the work that she has done is incredible. Now you're sitting there going, oh sure, you're her husband, you can say that, you know. <laughs> But what I did want to mention was that while she was out there, she received accolades at the CSL retreat out at Asilomar um, that she would never tell you about, at least from the podium. We have a new executive director of the organization who Michelle has never met. But this woman came to her, her name is Michelle as well. It's CSL, everybody's name is Michelle. I don't get it, I don't know what happened. But. So she came to her and, and congratulated her and complimented her on all the work that she's done, the forgiveness work, the shadow work, and all of that that this woman who has just become the executive director was well aware of. So that's good. But then another member of leadership recognized her from the stage in front of everybody and said, thank God for the work that Michelle Wadley has been doing. So I bring that up because, you know, it's hard to be a guru in your hometown. You know, I'm sure Jesus was just a carpenter to those he grew up with, right? But when, when somebody goes out who's part of our community here and draw such wonderful attention to what we're doing here. It needs to be mentioned. It needs to be recognized. And everybody here in this community needs to be thanked because she wouldn't be able to do this without everybody in this community and she'll be the first one to tell you that. So, I give to you our wonderful spiritual leader. Reverend Dr. Michelle Watley. Thank you. It did not pay him to do that. <laughs> and the, uh, for those of you who know, the shout out from the stage was from uh, Reverend Dr. Andriette Earl, oh. who was telling her story. And uh, Andriette is a now a friend of Ty's and where Branis is the, she's still the music, yeah, the choir director, music leader there. So there are, there are sister church on the West Coast in uh, Oakland and they have a fantastic work. And it was, it was quite thrilling. It was, I was, a little, I was humbled. I have to say I was humbled. So I'm looking down at the title of my talk today and the title of the talk I changed it from what it was. I don't know what version of whatever you saw, but the title of my talk today is Live From Yes. But then I also, it can read Live From Yes. I thought, oh, that sounds like a good club. Live From Yes! <laughs> Where we could create an entire reality based on our yes. And I hadn't thought about that till this morning. It's too big, because I would have changed my talk. But yes, rightly practiced opens hearts and opens minds and opens doors. And there's a lot of reasons why we're, some of us tend to hold back a little bit and we're gonna look at that. So passion, refer, um, the definition of passion, refers to a strong and intense emotional or enthusiastic attachment, drive or interest in something, often accompanied by a deep sense of dedication and motivation. It compels individuals to invest significant time, energy, and effort. 
into pursuing and nurturing their interests and goals. Definition. We all knew that once. You knew you were going to be a firefighter. You knew that you might be the president. You knew you might be the next great author. You knew you'd be the top cheerleader when you were little. When you were little. You had no reason to doubt yourself. You had no reason to hold back your dreams. So you just freed them to be who you wanted to be. Right? Do you remember that time? There was a time you all, I know maybe some of us have to go back a little further than others, but we, we know that time. But then what happens is, as we grow, some of the passions and the dreams begin to dull. They don't dull all at once. They don't just shut down. They dull over a long period of time because someone told you to be practical. Someone told you, well, you better get a real job because, you know, how much money can you make singing? How much money can you make being an artist? How much money can you make? Oh, you think you're going to be an author? Yeah, try. So those, some of those criticisms of life. And so one little tiny bit at a time, or you were still in school and you took a test. And this is me. In a freshman year in high school, I broke my, I broke my leg playing football, of all things. Um, and what happened was I missed the first three months of school. Now, I, I was bad at math anyway. Now, suddenly, my bad at math came, became really bad at math. Even though we had had tutors, it just wasn't sinking in. And I barely got through freshman year, and my math teacher said to me, okay. My math teacher said to me, I'll pass you with a 70 if you don't take any more math. <laughs> yes! But that was a reality that caused a lot of other things. Because then suddenly I wasn't prepared for college courses. Instead of encouraging me to get help and get through it, now I dumbed myself down. There started an idea about myself that I was not smart. She didn't mean to do that, so I'm not, this isn't a blame thing. She thought she was helping me to get through, and she did, because it was awful. I hated math. And then, I don't, what the hell with calculus? It, they're not even numbers. Like, I don't understand that stuff, you know? They're not even real. So, so here I was, and even though, even though I might have had the capacity, suddenly somebody let me off the hook and I didn't have to rise up. She, as you've heard me say this before, she colluded with my less than instead of collaborating with my possibility. And that's what happens when we don't hold each other to a higher standard. When we don't speak to each other about being in integrity and, and, and keeping dreams alive. We delve down one little bit at a time. It's like, I love to cook. I'm not a chef, but I'm a good cook when I have time. And though I hate when I go to someone's house and they hand me a knife and the knife is like butter, I'm like, what the heck? But my own knives get that way. So I'll have my son, who is a real chef, I'll have him sharpen the knives. Matter of fact, he's doing that today for me. But over time, the knives dull a little bit at a time. They don't come from sharp to dull. They come dull one step at a time because we're not listening to ourselves. We're not catching the, the daily moment-to-moment -moment thoughts that dulls our dreams. Are you with me? Are you catching this? So what happens is we don't notice. You know, it's like a, a dimmer on a light. You don't necessarily always notice it until you're in the dark. And then you're like, what happened to the light? What happened to the sharpness? What happened to my dream? What happened to my passion? You know, um, I think I could probably be a little annoying because, because I am an idea machine. I can't even shut my brain off. But I have learned to discipline it. I have learned to not tell you every time I have a new idea. God knows I don't even tell my husband every time I have a new idea because he'd be like, whoa, 
oh, wait a minute, we didn't do the first 15, okay? <laughs> so I've had to learn to discipline what comes in my mind and not let it out of my mouth, simply because I am passionate, but I don't want to, I don't want people running, <laughs> running from me, you know, running from me in the night. So, what I, what I am passionate about is people. I'm passionate about people, which has its pluses and its minuses. The pluses, is, the pluses are, are obvious. It's love, it's connection, it's having friends of 20 some odd, you know, having friends that are over 20 years in the making. It's seeing that new person, it's seeing the new light in somebody. I was at a conference uh, at the retreat and uh, this woman walked up to me and she had sunglasses on and I was sitting with my friend in the sun at a Silomar. We were just kind of hanging out. And this woman walked by and she, and she smiled at me and she had glasses on. I did not recognize her to save my life. And it wasn't until she took her glasses off and reminded me and then all of a sudden a flood of memories came back. I wrote about her in my recent blog. And it was so sweet, like that's, one, once she reminded me, because I hadn't seen her certainly since before COVID, so once I saw her, the flood of memories and the connection, and I'm even looking out here now, I have very specific memories when, for many of you specifically sitting here in this room, I can remember the first time I met you because something happens because I love people, so that becomes my outlet, right? So what happens is there's this thread of connection that, that is alive and it doesn't go away. The con of being a people person is being disappointed. I'm very human and people breaking promises or not keeping commitments, it's hard. I'm, I, I'm true confession. It's hard, I, I don't always manage it as well as I like. Recently, I was having a conversation with somebody and since, since doing this CSL series this year and doing that whole month on authenticity and then on vulnerability, I have been opening up and recommitting to myself to be more of me than I've ever been. That doesn't mean the more of me is good, but it means it's me. And I want to accept me as I am, so you can accept me as I am, so I can accept you as I am. And in comes Ricky Byer's song, as I want, I love myself so much, so I can love you so much, so you can love you so much, so you can start loving me. Yeah. That's what that's about. But the, but the fact is, it, it does, I, I, there's an ouch for me, because I'm, I'm not as tough as I look. I'm not. I'm not a bad, big bad, badass in the way that some people think I am. I'm not. I'm a complete mush and my heart gets broken and I have to deal with disappointment. But my passion for people overrides. It overrides my, my fear of getting my heart broken. Thank God. And I say thank God because it's not, I'm not responsible for what I'm about to tell you, but thank God because people like um, Olga and, and Ingrid became friends because of this community, even though I used to swap their names all the time. <laughs> the Chicas became a group because of that. You know, Reverend Rich, uh, who wasn't, a, he was a musician, went in to become a minister and then a minister. Dan, as our musician, a practitioner and a minister. Reverend Neil, as a practitioner and then a minister. E Evelyn, who became a practitioner and a minister. Tony, who's doing the same thing. E Elaine, a practitioner, minister, doctor. And, and this happened not because, not because me, but because of my yes. My yes paved the way for people to gather, for people to get to know each other and love each other. And sometimes you'll, I'll hear a story about how you went out down the shore or at the restaurant or you have people in your home and you gather. And it's like, oh, that's people loving on each other. And I'm so grateful. When Clyde first came to us, 
He came to us as like an extra here, there, sometimes. We hired him to do sound here and there, sometimes. But now he's part of our family. And that was my yes, because I love people. And I'm, I am one of those people that if I have something good, I want you to have it too. The other night, I'm, on tel I'm watching, um, I have a local favorite author, Harlan Coben. He writes murder mysteries. I, they're terrible. I mean, you don't want it yet. But they're one of my favorite things, you know. And I love it because he lives locally, and his references are like to Livingston High School in the circle. And what's that bar over on Route 10? I forget that bar that's over there. It, it's just a classic place for people who grew up in the area. And so they make a lot of his, they've, I used to say, why don't they make his movies or his books into movies? Well, they do, but they've done it in Poland. They've done it in England. They didn't do it here until now. So now they have uh, the United States and Amazon created a movie out of one of his books. And I didn't know about it. I put it on Amazon the other day, and I'm like, Harlan oh, Coben, boom! Okay, I start watching it. But my next, my next call is, to, or my next thing is, I text Jessa because Jessa and I have shared our passion and shared the books. And when I was visiting our home, we like binge watched all of the Harlan Coben movies. And I, and I text her, Hey, there's a new movie. It's Harlan Coben. She goes, I know. I'm watching the second episode. Look at me! <laughs> Jess, I wonder I was going to be saying that. But that, that is me. I want you to have what I have. I want you to have the love. I want you to have the capacity to not get stuck behind an identity that isn't real. That's what I want. That's what I want for every one of us. Um, to come, you know, what happens to us is we come from this vibrant, wild-eyed, wishing, dreaming, imagining young individual. You know who you are, and you know, you think you're going to be a star, or an artist, or like I said, the President of the United States. And then we dull it down, and then at some point we start to remember, and we wonder, why am I not doing my passion? When the truth is, the passion can never die. It can't die. You can ignore it, though. You can ignore it. And you don't even probably do it on purpose. Now, we have different ages in this, group, in this room today, but for those of us who are gray-haired and above, or the should be gray hair and above, we think we're too old, we think it's too late, we think since we didn't, we can't. We think we don't have the capacity. And I am telling you once again, I've done this before, I'm telling you now, it's all a bunch of bullshit. It's, it, there, there, is, there is a glorious and exciting possibility for each one of us. And it doesn't have to, it doesn't have to look the same for each one of us. When, we're at, when I was out at Silomar, our new spiritual leaders, Reverend uh, Sonny Cantrell Smith, who I love, we now have, listen, this, I'm not saying anything about men. This is not a statement about men, be clear. However, I'm really glad we have a shift at the top of leadership. We're now, all of our main leaders are women. So something's gonna just shift, something. And there's straight women and there's gay women and it's like, Hallelujah. Like it's, it can't stay the same. We did something different. You know, we did something different. Like Neil said, for next year, we want to do something different. We want to expand beyond the studies that we've been doing. And you know, for me, I've probably been about 90% passion and 10% of experience and education. Not a sustainable ratio. But as Lucille Ball says, I'd rather regret the things I've done than regret the things I haven't done. I'd rather try and fail over and over again than to not try. I don't even mind failing in front of you. I mean, I don't have much of a choice. It's the way I am. But I would rather do that and, and have an aliveness to my life. 
you know, this summer, um, now that my, well, my visiting grandchildren, now that my grandchildren are old enough, you know, I go to their house in the mornings and I, well, I call them up first and I ask them if they want to go for a walk and they get themselves ready. And we go for walks together almost every morning in the summer. It's been fantastic. And even the baby, the baby got, got wind of what was going on. Now she's only two and now she says to us, Nana, walk, Nana, walk. So now I push her in a stroller while the others are, 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 uh, are walking with me. But the beauty of that is I keep drinking in more of life. If you're not feeling passionate, you're not looking around. There's beauty under your nose. We have to learn to take our attention from what's not working to what's working. We have to take it from away. It's just a shift. It's a shift, people. A shift from I'm not enough to, oh, hell yes, I am. Yes, I'm enough. Yes, I'm unstoppable. Yes, I have it going on. Yes. It's just a shift. It might feel big, but, but it, and it does take some discipline. It does, because some of the practices, some of the practices have to be repeated, because we have to replace the old neural pathways with new ones. So that's why, and you probably have heard Tony say this even more than I, because she, she's like the queen of spiritual practices. You can't get to where you want to get to if you don't shift something. You've got to shift. You've got to discipline the mind a little bit. You've got to free your passion. And at, at any age, <laughs> some of you watch my Facebook page, you know I have a new passion. Or It's not a new one, but I've renewed it. It's my Zen tangling. I am now spending hours in this little bits of drawing, hours. And now it's come from being stressful, can I do this? It's finally become a meditative practice. I'm learning to breathe, I'm learning to slow down. And now it's become a spiritual practice. So we're never, too, we're never too old. I mean, it was Bill Sarnowski, and I know he's watching us today, who said, I mean, he, he, he was invited to be an artist from the time he was young. But it wasn't until very much into his adulthood that he said yes. Ty has said yes. Ty wouldn't be sitting here in front of you. Clive has said yes. Others of you have said yes at a time that maybe was later for many of us. Some of us have shied away. <sighs> yes opens doors, yes opens a heart, and yes creates the miraculous. <laughs> I love this quote. In the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take, the relationships we were afraid to have, and the decisions we waited too long to make. I'll read it again. In the end, we only regret the chances we didn't take, the relationships we were afraid to have, and the decisions we waited too long to make. Lewis Carroll. And El I, this is my favorite. Eleanor Roosevelt said, do one thing every day that scares you. That scares you. We can't keep living life safely and think we're going to expand. It's all, it, it, Lila, will you help me? What? Will you help me? Would you pass one of these out to everybody? Thank you. We can't, ex we can't play small and fearful and think that we're gonna have the life we need. You do not have to, I wanna say it again, I know I said it last week, you don't have to make money at your passion, you could just find your joy. I don't, I don't want you always to collapse those into each other. Your passion, which might be your art, it's worthy of doing even if you don't make money at it. Let's, let's uncouple those because you might measure yourself as you're not doing it right. Don't do that to yourself. Have your passion. Just I mean, Evelyn, every time now Evelyn's on Zoom, I look behind her and I get to see her art. I mean, saying yes, Desiree, saying yes to your art, it's just stunning. It's a stunning and beautiful thing. And yeah, we have one more over here, Lila. Oh, oh, in the front too, in the front row. That's okay. 
<laughs> it's okay. And then I, actually, I'm going to need one. <laughs> so hopefully there's some left over. We have to recondition the mind. You and I have got to recondition our mind. Just like, thank you, darling, just like building a muscle, we must recondition the mind, and it requires repetition. It requires repetition. It requires less repetition. If you're really plugged into spirit and you got spiritual mind treatment down to a science, because that treatment, that, um, that process of spiritual mind treatment, it sinks more deeply into our essence. But if you do not have treatment down to, the, down to a science where you're really experiencing it, then you need to repeat it. Now I'm gonna ask you all to say these out loud with me. Yes, I am willing to be seen. Yes, I am willing to feel good. Yes, I am willing to be inspired. Yes, I am willing to succeed. Did I do something wrong? Yes, I'm willing to take action. Yes, I am willing to believe in myself. Yes, I am willing to live a fully expressed life. Yes, I am willing to no longer be identified with my struggles. Yes, I am willing to love myself unconditionally and to be loved this way. Yes, I am willing to live a bold and beautiful life and model this for others. Yes, I am willing for my passion to open doors. Yes, I am willing for my passion to open my heart. Yes, I am willing to step into a new and renewed me. Yes, I am passionate about me. Oh, life, I heard me, what else? Living fully. What else are you passionate about? Music. Music. Anything else? Authenticity. Authenticity. Yeah, I gotta tell you. Well, let, let me finish this down, then I want to speak to that. Yet, your yes coupled with your passion is a powerful formula for opening up spaces inside of you, expand oh, it's supposed to be expanding your consciousness and living the life of your dreams. The thing about the authenticity, we've spoken about authenticity a number of times over the years. But it wasn't until a few months back when we had it as part of the, of the global theme. And then, of course, I do a podcast on Wednesdays and I double up the theme by, you know, approaching it with my partner, uh, Reverend um, Alan Vukas from uh, Concordia CSL. And we were in this conversation around authenticity. I, I got it in a deeper way than I'd ever gotten it. And I started to loosen, I, I loosened my judgment of myself and decided to be more authentic and more honest about more things. And let me tell you what happens when you do that. There's a whole bunch of relief. Because that authenticity requires not being addicted to being nice not being addicted to twisting myself in a pretzel, pretzel so you'll accept me. I would like to be accepted, but I'm unwilling to sell out for it. I'm unwilling. So thank you for speaking that word into the room, Evelyn. Today, by the way, um, post-celebration, we, we do have some um, coffee and such, and I want to offer you a gift today, all right? So some of you have some of my books because you've been with me all the year, all these years. But on the back table are my books, not my forgiveness book. I'm not giving that one away yet for free. <laughs> I should have, but I forgot it actually. If you do not have a book and you would like to take one of my books, I invite you to take it for free, any one of them. If you want a second one, take it, but give a donation to the center for it and you'll see they're on the back table. Why? Because I want be us to begin, as a community, cultivating giving and receiving in a more conscious way. So I'm going to start the process by doing that. And somebody who also did this, 
and it was so lovely for her to be the first person. Let us please appreciate Donnie Barnes because she sponsored this Sunday. Thank you, Donnie Barnes. <laughs> it was sweet. <laughs> it was sweet to see you come in. So you too can sponsor a Sunday for $125. Um, you can do that, and, and, and it supports the community. Um, and we need the, we need the support. I'm not going to try to find any other language. I'm not going to trip on you any other way. I'm telling you, we require the support and uh, and your generosity. So. Let us take this into prayer. I'm going to ask the practitioners who are in the room to stand. And if everyone else would hold hands if you care to, I'd love for you to connect. And let us take this moment today into consciousness. Ah, oh, the beauty. Yes. The beauty of life is the beauty of the presence of the one as each of us. Let us relish, absolutely relish in this moment of connecting, whether you're online or in the room. Let us relish in community, in connecting in the vibration of the one. Let us feel seen, loved, and recognized. I bless this conversation that has been had today, and I trust that pearls of wisdom have landed ever so gently into the mind and heart of each one listening. And if nothing else, let us walk away from here remembering, yes, yes, yes. Living a passionate yes. For the love that's in the room and so much more, I am eternally grateful. And I surrender this word and I allow it to be so. And so it is. by Bradis McKenzie. Now that we haven't done it in a little while, perfect to follow the talk. I will follow love with my heart and soul. I will give my life to the way that I must go I will hold your hand and our fears will hide with our mighty love only peace will find love saved me, love raised me, with a holy view, I know what to do, love is born anew, love saved me, love raised me, with a holy view, I know what to do, love is born anew, I will follow love, with my heart and soul, I will give my life, to the way that I must go, I will hold your hand, and our fears will hide with our mighty love. Only peace will find. Love raised me, love saved me with a holy view. 
I know what to do. Love is born anew. Love saved me. Love raised me with a holy view. I know what to do. Love is born anew. With a holy view, I know what to do. Love is born anew. I realized a couple of things. One is we need increased security because of all the groupies that want to run up and hug and kiss Todd <laughs> in, in the middle of the service. Fortunately, it didn't turn into a Tom Jones situation where uh, undies or something, you know. You know, but, you know he's, so, he's so popular, you know. So uh, the other thing, I don't know what happened to Michelle out in California, but she came back wearing the ruby slippers. So uh, her house fell on somebody out there. We don't know who that was. So um, also, after the service today, we're going to have a discussion. We're going to stay and have an open discussion. Um, any particular topic we're doing? Yes. Good. We're doing the particular topic. So of all of you who wanted to talk about particular, this is for you. Um, also, they have been really, really nice here to allow us to stay. We asked if we could stay for like an extra, till like one o'clock in order to do hospitality while we're here. And they graciously said, yes, no extra cost, nothing. Just stay to do it. So we can start, we can start hanging here a little bit longer and doing, you know, the, yes. uh, the talk and the chat yes. together. And I, I will invite you if, you, if you, I'm sure you haven't heard yet, it's not out there very much, but all of these conferences and retreats that come together for a CSL are fantastic to go to. And in February, which will be here before you know it, there is going to be the conference in Charleston, South Carolina. They don't have it on the East Coast all that often, so... It's in like the third week of February, something like that. So please, if you're interested, plan on going down. It's always a fantastic experience. I think a number of you people have been to them before, and they are terrific. So, um, I want to remind everybody, the only day we are meeting in person in September is September 10th, okay? We have limited access due to the High Holy Days here at the temple, so that we, we were able to get September 10th. Um, <clears throat> but we may do some different things. Uh, so keep reading the newsletter, both newsletters. Keep reading it. Everything that's needed to know is in there. And if not, reach out. Let us know. We'll tell you what you need to know. We can answer questions. Uh, few things, and all of these are posted on the website, cslnj.org, and in the newsletters, but uh, our practitioner, Nettie Bonner, is doing She Speaks. It's a women's gathering, uh, which is a monthly gathering uh, for just women and Ray Atkins to share, um, and uh, no, I'm kidding about Ray. Um, pages Together, Your Invisible Power, a book study with Reverend Michelle. Dancing with the Shadow, a prayer-led path to wellness with Reverend Michelle. Mastering Change, a class with Bill Sarnowski is coming up. And that is in, starts in um, September as well, September 21st. We have another book study group, Living Untethered. Uh, Joe Christiana is leading Tranquil Harmony, a mindful meditation path. And uh, the Artist Way for Early Birds. You folks that want to join in at 8 o'clock on a Saturday morning with the Artist Way with Reverend Joel Flatinas, that starts September 9th. That's coming up soon, too. So um, we have all those wonderful things, but I do, and again, Donnie, thank you so much. 
everybody, all the giving that's done here allows us to keep doing what we're doing for all these years. And yes. whether it's financial, whether it's time, whatever it is, we're all very grateful for the fact that we can keep this happening and this going. So in light of that, if you would, you have it on the uh, Zoom and also in the handout, if you could read the Conscious Giving Affirmation along with me. I bless this gift that I give today. I give this gift from my heart and I give it mindfully. May my gift go further to heal, prosper, and bless this center and all who enter. I accept all good that comes as a result of this flow, knowing that it returns to me multiplied abundantly, and so it is. Yes! One other thing, too, this is our third Sunday of the month, so I want to point out our third Sunday of the month, we always ask you to give an additional uh, donation to our outreach program. Uh, we do have programs where we do reach out um, and we do um, help other organizations and they're varied. We've put it in the newsletter. If you know of an organization you'd like us to work with to support and help, which we have done, um, we're open to those suggestions. So uh, if, if you, um, you want to mark in the back, there's a bowl with the envelopes in it. That's for regular donations. If you take an envelope and you want to make a special donation just for the outreach, just mark it that way on the envelope that this is for outreach. And we're happy to take that and do the wonderful work we do. We tithe to a lot of different organizations and uh, they are very, very grateful for what we do. And it's a blessing for us to be able to do it. I, do you have anything else that I forgot? No? All right, then, let's go back for one more song. Thanks for being here. All right, we've been very mellow. <laughs> yes. Very introspective. Yes. Now we got time to get up. Yes. Be a blessing in your life. 
praise God every day with all of your might. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Hallelujah! <laughs> happy Sunday, happy everyday!